of you still don't know about this, you and your dog are missing out. Visit dogthenews.com and join the movement now. Be our premium member today with 14 days trial. And enjoy the perks. Dog Mom News, your access point to dog tips, trends, and more. Dog Mom News is a digital platform where we highlight the unique relationships between dogs and dog moms. There's so much to talk about and so much to explore. Now, with Dog Mom News Live and in our show, we're going to be talking about a variety of topics, and you're going to be hearing from expert canine professionals, females in their industry who are doing amazing things. We're going to talk about topics of interest that some are serious and some are funny, but we're going to talk about dog health and viral dog videos and memes and posts from social media. So that's of course the fun, but we're also going to get really practical and we're going to share training tips with you. And we're going to share, you know, how you can work on your dog's nutrition. We're going to look at competitive sports and grooming, and we're going to hear from dog moms with huge hearts who are doing great things in their community and a lot of non work. Now, we want to make sure that you get involved in the movement. Of course, go to dogmomnews.com to learn more about what we're doing and to get involved.
Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Dog Mom News Live. I'm Megan Reistead and many of you may be asking, what exactly is Dog Mom News Live? Well, Dog Mom News is a media platform dedicated to highlighting the unique relationships between dogs and their moms. Dog Mom News Live is a weekly live multi-stream digital simulcast where we will discuss points of interest from a wide spectrum of expert female canine industry professionals, trainers, behaviorists, veterinarians, nutritionists, groomers, social media influencers, and innovators. Every week, we will cover a variety of topics concerning canine nutrition and health, viral dog videos, memes, and posts from social media. We'll talk training tips, service dogs, competitive sports, grooming, nonprofit, community organizations, and so much more. All right, so be sure to visit dogmomnews.com today to join our movement and enjoy this journey with us. Do us a favor and also hit the like button on this video if you would and subscribe to our YouTube channel and ring the notification bell button so you will know when we release new content. This is going to be a great episode with so much in store for all of you amazing dog moms. Now this week we have a couple of superstars in the doggy world. We'll visit with Carol Novello, the founder of Mutual Rescue and author of Mutual Rescue, How Adopting a Homeless Animal Can Save You Too. And then later, Daryl the Doge will perform some tricks live on the show and we'll talk with his owner and trainer and of course dog mom Haley Adair so be sure to stay tuned dog moms not only will we also have a fun gift card giveaway later in the broadcast but we will also announce winners from our fourth of July video and photo contest this is something you do not want to miss but first we will go straight to the news desk in a segment we call Doggy Headlines. Our first story is from the Doggington Post. It's about a heroic dog rescuing its owner from a hawk attack and it went viral. This is a video you have to see. It's from TikTok. It's a TikTok video showing a dog named Cushy saving her owner from a hawk that got into the apartment through a patio door. Now, as the owner, Nikki Kundenmal, played her guitar, the hawk surprised them by coming in through the open door. Well, Cushy then tried to alert Nikki by barking like crazy. Like, I'm telling you, Cushy went crazy. And initially, Nikki didn't even realize she was in danger. Well, then the hawk landed on Nikki's cereal bowl, causing chaos. She went running. Cushy continued barking and scared that hawk away. It is the best video. This video actually gained over 6 million views and nearly 900,000 likes on TikTok. So way to go, Cushy. You saved the day. Our next story is originally from iHeartDogs.com. It's about a stolen husky that is reunited with the owner after two years. Well, Semper Fidelis, a husky, went missing while his owner, Cameron, was in California for medical treatments. So private investigator Anna Campos discovered that Semper had actually been taken and put up for sale. Two years later, the two were reunited, bringing joy to Cameron, who is now in remission. So the story keeps getting better and better. It is the perfect ending to this story filled with faithfulness and happiness. And of course, welcome home, Semper. And now a story from reshareworthy.com. It's about a mother dog helping rescuers find and dig for her buried puppies. The determination of a mother, right? So Animal Aid Unlimited in India responded to a collapsed home where a mother's dogs, a mother dog's puppies rather, were buried. Well, this desperate mother wagged her tail and she signaled to the rescuers to the location, frantically digging right alongside them, aware of the danger that obviously her puppies had faced. After a long effort, they heard whimpers and they found those puppies alive. 
Relieved, the mother inspected every single one of them and rescuers relocated the family and they're now all safe. That is an amazing story. So way to go, mama, and way to go to those rescuers as well. And now we have a story from animalchannel.co. Oh, look at those two cuties. So Carly, Carly is deaf and she found her perfect companion in Rhett, a therapy dog who is also deaf. So they bonded instantly and became inseparable. Carly even taught Rhett sign language. He knows over 30 signs. And you can see there, Carly then had a baby when Rhett then understood and cared for his little sister. How cute is that? Now, to alleviate his separation anxiety, they then adopted another dog, another cutie named Maggie May. I love this story. Such a sweet story. And communication certainly knows no bounds. Isn't that a lesson? And now another story from the Doggington Post. A clever dog detects its owner's breast cancer. So a mother in Nottingham, England, credits her dog, Luna, right here, as her lifesaver for detecting her breast cancer. So Luna actually jumped on her and pawed at her right breast, behaving unusually. After experiencing pain, she then sought medical attention and was diagnosed with breast cancer. Grateful, of course, to Luna for that early detection, the mother underwent surgeries to remove the lump and now awaits further treatment. That's amazing. She emphasizes the importance of regular self-checks and, of course, expresses gratitude for her amazing dog. What a story. And in our last story, this one is from iHeartDogs.com. An overzealous dog steals the show during a romantic proposal. So Jack here, he planned a memorable beach proposal for Maddie, but their pup, Sonny, became the center of attention for all of this. So Maddie here was trying to wrangle Sonny for a photo unaware of Jack's intentions. Look at this picture. I love this. Well, Jack got down on one knee. Sonny then gets super excited, explodes with excitement, creating a joyful frenzy for everyone. The beach, of course, holds a very special meaning for the family, making it the perfect drop, backdrop for this unforgettable proposal. They have to frame that photo. That's amazing. Just a perfect moment. And of course, congratulations to Jack and Maddie. And those are your doggy headlines for the week of July 13th, 2023. Please make sure to tag us. If you come across a headline that you think we might enjoy, you can find us at Dog Mom News on social media. And now it is time to welcome our very first guest in a segment we call Paw Parazzi. Well, Haley Adair is the owner and personal trainer for a very special celebrity, Daryl the Doge. Haley adopted Daryl as a rescue dog. And for the past couple of years, Daryl and Haley have been on an amazing journey, even recently with an appearance on The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. We're so excited to have Haley and Daryl joining us from Seattle, Washington. Hello to both of you. Hello. Good to see you. <laughs> Thank you. Now I see we have Daryl here. And then is that a Daryl pillow as well next to you? Yeah, we may have some Daryl art around our apartment. <laughs> <laughs> so cute. I can see you guys. So tell us a little bit before we get into more on Daryl. Let's go back to the beginning here. Tell us where your love for dogs comes from. So actually, I grew up with cats. Um, I had two cats when I was younger and always was very jealous of people who had dogs. All my friends did. Aww. And so you can imagine the day that my parents came home and told me that we were adopting a dog. Aww. Now we actually, as a family had adopted Alaskan Malamutes from the time I was younger. Uh -huh. So I was introduced to big dogs at a very young age, but when my husband and I got engaged a couple years ago, we decided one of our first things we wanted to do was adopt our very own dog. Mm, and that's where Daryl comes in, I'm guessing. That's where Daryl comes in. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So we had been looking for uh, kind of trying to compromise because my husband loved golden retrievers. He always had okay. golden retrievers growing up. I love corgis because, I mean, Who corgis. Doesn't? <laughs> and we were so excited when one of my coworkers told us about a litter that was looking for adoption for the rescue that she volunteered for. 
And we saw this video of all these puppies running around, just, you know, like little puppies do. Yeah. And this one dog sitting in the corner, just staring at the wall. <laughs> and right away, we were like, he's the one. We need him. <laughs> and come to find out, he was a golden retriever corgi. However, a couple of years later, um, his legs never stopped growing. So he <laughs> didn't have any, uh, we didn't think he had any corgi in him. Okay. Okay. So Bree, do you know what, what Daryl is? Yeah, we had to take one of the DNA tests because you yep. just needed to know yep. um, and found out that he is a super mutt, a pit bull, Pyrenees, Collie, Australian Shepherd, cattle dog, Cocker Spaniel, the list goes on. He's just Daryl breed. He's his own breed. And he is cute. He is so cute. Yeah. I'm biased, but I, I do think he's the cutest dog I've ever seen. <laughs> I mean, seriously, he's really cute. Um, and so I can understand why people at work wanted you to, you know, bring him around. You got to do something that most dog moms would dream about doing. You got to bring him to work with you. You work for the Alzheimer's Association. Tell us how that all came to be. Yeah. So our office was dog friendly and I always dreamed of bringing my own dog. Other people had dogs that they brought in and it was just such a nice feeling of comfort to have dogs around the office. They were all very well trained, of course. So I had big shoes to fill once we had a couple of our dogs uh, leave. And I brought Daryl in as a two month old puppy, which was probably the worst idea. If anybody ever wants to have an office dog, don't adopt a puppy and bring them in because it's not easy. Uh, but with that being said, he was kind of an old soul, um, honestly, oh. from the time he was little and was just an absolute cuddler. He, he went through a puppy phase, but I don't remember very much of him misbehaving while we were in the office. He was, he was a really, really good puppy. And, uh, but it was very hard to have a puppy in the office. Um, it was, he's always been like the front desk greeter. And um, he actually learned a lot of things coming to the office when he was really young that were super beneficial uh, when he got older. Very cool. Okay. So then COVID hit that changed things, right? So then you went home. Oh. I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. How did he handle that routine? How did you handle that routine? The oh, you? <laughs> it was so hard. Yeah. We were so used to going in every single day. He was getting a socialization every single day. It was a place for us to get out and explore and get all the sniffs in. And so it was an absolute, just, it, he was so confused and we just didn't leave one, oh. one morning. So of course, both of us were very bored <laughs> and started to find that he was really a, an extreme we knew he was a smart dog but he was yeah. really smart yeah so we took um his love for treats and his love for affection and put it to work with um some of our side hobbies like training and positive reinforcement wow okay you even taught him to ride a skateboard i love these videos they are so cool or did he teach himself like how did this work who taught who here so yeah, so like any normal person, um, we ended up buying our dog a skateboard right. and uh, gave it to him to kind of get comfortable with. One of the uh -huh. key things that I always do uh, with him is whenever we're introducing a new prop or like a new toy or something, I always let him sniff it out, get comfortable with it. And for the skateboard, I wanted to make sure we set him up for success. So I made mm -hmm. sure to hold on to it so he wasn't like, you know, jumping on it right away and freaking himself out. Uh, but right away, I could tell he didn't care that it was moving. Like, he was excited about it. He wanted to push it. And we, of course, were stuck inside. So yeah. our kitchen became the skate park. And <laughs> hopefully my landlord is listening to this. Uh, we but he, he went back and forth in the kitchen. I had to be the brake for him because he was trying to push it so quickly. Um, and one of the... Uh, one of the things that I did wrong was I actually ordered a toy skateboard instead of a regular skateboard. So okay. he's kind of long. Yeah, he like needs the real thing. He needs the real thing. Yeah. So we had to upgrade pretty quickly, but with the toy skateboard, he was able to teach himself to push with the two feet behind, which was pretty adorable. And yeah. it set him up for success when we moved him to a full on skateboard about a month later. Wow. Okay, cool. So obviously the two of you must be able to communicate pretty well with each other. Um, how did you learn to communicate with Daryl, Daryl and, and get him to, you know, try new things? Do you got any secrets to this that other 
dog owners can utilize? Yeah. So one of the things I do like to say is um, I'm a professional Daryl trainer, um, not a professional dog trainer. Um, okay. I have not gone through any certifications, but I've done okay. a lot of like studying and yeah. worked with other dogs that stay with us and other things. So it's totally a fun yeah. side project. Um, but he and he and I have been together since he was two months old. So I have gotten to pick up on all of his cues and his body language mm-hmm. and everything from the time he was a little puppy. Mm-hmm. So his his needs and just when he was so young, I was able to pick up on what he needed, um, what made him uncomfortable, and really try to tune in to those things when I'm working with him. So if yeah. he starts to show that he's in a in an uncomfortable place or his body language tells me, you know, his ears are back or his his he's panting or licking his lips or something like that, then I'll know to step back or make or bring him somewhere where he can get a little bit more comfortable. Mm-hmm. So you know your dog. You're his mama, right? Absolutely. We have our own language. He knows yeah. a, couple, a couple human words, but you know, like all the way up or down or sit or whatever, so that we can have a foundation for learning some of these tricks. But I swear he understands English sometimes. Yeah. I mean, he does have some human like qualities, right? Is he wearing glasses on that pillow that I see there? Oh, yeah. Yeah. He is wearing glasses and a hat. That's amazing. <laughs> oh, and a hat. That's amazing. Okay. So tell us a little bit about the progression of learning for Daryl. So then you were adding new tricks, right? Mm-hmm. So he knows how to ride a skateboard at this point, but now, I mean, like tonight show with Jimmy Fallon, I mean, he's picking up steam here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we had a lot of fun, um, during lockdown, mm-hmm. uh, being creative and testing out new tricks. We started out with like simple things, kind of jumping through the hoop. Um, I would lure him through my arms with treats. Uh, we would try out, you know, just basic rollover. And once we conquered all kind of the basic tricks, we started to work on more challenging ones. So we started with the skateboard and then um, our, so Seattle got a hockey team a couple of years ago and we are both big time hockey fans. So we decided mm-hmm. that we would try out hockey because I mean, why not? We yeah. found a little toy stick and um, he just he learned it within probably a couple months of just hitting the ball into the into a little cup and it, the way that he looks back at me whenever he scores is just like did I do it right it's just the sweetest thing I've ever seen Aww. and the past couple months we've had a lot of fun trying out new sports uh and including a couple that he's made up on his own uh or at least uh you know tried to yeah. do something tried tried to understand what i'm saying and he becomes he gets creative when he's trying to figure out what i'm saying um and so for last month june was alzheimer's and brain awareness month and one of the things we did actually to raise awareness for my work was learn mm-hmm. or try i guess a sport mm-hmm. a day that is really really cool so tell us a little bit more about that of course And I want to know more about all of your interesting adventures together. You guys have done some really cool things. Yeah. So we um, tested out a different sport every single day. We asked some of our followers about, uh, um, you know, what they wanted to see. And so we were challenged to try out and stretch our mind uh, a little bit because it's hard to even name that many sports. (laughs) Um, And so we tried out a new one every day. It was really fun um, and just got to, you know, try and see what he loved to do and what he didn't love so much. Um, But we, yeah, so we've had so many great experiences together. Um, As you mentioned before, we were on the Jimmy Fallon show Um, earlier this year. We got to be on the tonight show with Jimmy Fallon and we had initially actually been asked early last year and I turned it down because we had just been in a car crash and he was a little bit scared of like even being in the car. So the Aww. thought of having to travel somewhere yeah. and being on a plane for eight hours was just not even a question. I, yeah. I was not going to go through that. Aww. So um, we had to turn them down, which is hard for me because it was like, yeah, you know, that's a dream come true. Right. But I was looking out for his best interest and decided that I wouldn't do it. But it allowed us to practice some of the things that we could work towards making him feel more comfortable and set him up for success if we were to travel in the future. So fast forward to last late fall, they invited us to be on the show again. And we had worked really hard on crate training and traveling and him Mm -hmm. being okay 
walking away from me for a couple hours at a time. (laughs) And so all the things that are, you know, really great things to work on with your dog anyways. But when we were asked, I was able to accept the offer without having to be worried that it would put him through an uncomfortable situation. So the, one of the highlights, honestly, for me was making it to New York. Um, It was probably (laughs) more challenging for me to be away from him for that amount of time, Um, but he was totally fine. In fact, he absolutely loved it from the moment we stepped foot in New York. (laughs) He was living his best life. Really? It's so funny. He loves the city life. Um, He loves going to the bathroom in the city. He loves eating (laughs) weird stuff off the streets in the city. Well, yeah. He wants to say hi to every single person he encounters. So he just, you know, it was, it was an absolutely just once in a lifetime kind of trip for my husband and Daryl and I. Oh, that is so cool. And man, the three of you together are doing a lot of amazing things, you know, helping the Alzheimer's Association by spreading awareness. Uh, Tell us about some of the different activities that he does to help out with that cause specifically. Yeah. So as I mentioned, he comes, he is the office dog. So he comes with me to the office. We work from home three days a week, um, but I go into the office and he comes with me now about once a week um, or twice a week, depending on the week. Uh, But we have, when we first started our skateboarding, uh, we took, we had a coworker that actually introduced us to a local news station and had us uh, do some skateboarding to raise awareness for Alzheimer's. Um, And from there, each year we've done different events to help raise funds and awareness for Alzheimer's research, care, and support. And this year, in addition to learning a trick a day, we're actually um, trying to find 101 dogs to join our team Ah! Um, and doing some local dog events, doing some online fun dog events, and just really trying to spread awareness to something that is really challenging and scary for people to talk to. Mm -hmm. um, in a more low key friendly way. Okay. Well, that is amazing work. So thank you for what you're doing there. Uh, earlier, this was so fun. We had a chance to see some of Daryl's tricks. So let's take a look. All right. So you and Daryl have some tricks here to show our audience. So we'll go ahead and give you the floor. Ladies and gentlemen, we have Haley Adair and Daryl the Doge. All right, ready? You get this? You want to hit in this? All the way, bud. Whoa! <laughs> that was so cute. Awesome. Very well done, Daryl. Yeah, you want to try another one? All the way. Go. Yes. Good. Oh. Stars. <laughs> Good job. All right. And then amazing. one of our other favorite tricks to do is, I guess you could call it a sport. Okay. Um, but we love to dance as well. Ready? Okay. <laughs> yes, good boy. <laughs> that is so cute. Yes. Good job. <laughs> good boy. Yeah, good job. <laughs> Way to go, Daryl. He's better than most people that I know at dancing. I mean, he's pretty good. Definitely better at me than dancing, that's for sure. <laughs> I think the two of you together are the perfect pair. Oh, I agree. <laughs> Thank you. All right. And wrapping things up here, you have to tell us how can our audience follow Daryl's journey and your work with the Alzheimer's Association? You can follow Daryl and and I sometimes um, <laughs> on all the socials at Daryl the Doge, and that's dog with an E at the end. Okay. And you can follow our journey with Alzheimer's and how uh, to participate in some of our events on our page. We have it linked in bio. Uh, send me a DM if you want to get involved. We're hoping to get people from all across the nation involved. Well, we've been talking with Haley Adair and enjoying the talents of her pup, Daryl the Doge. They're joining us from Seattle, Washington. Thank you both so much for joining us today and for being on the show. Thank you. We'll make sure to like this video and then, of course, also hit the subscribe button now on our YouTube channel because we don't want you to miss any of this great content. All right. Well, our staff has spent the week scouring the internet and they have now emerged from their digital rabbit hole with some of the best dog videos in a segment we call Bark Out Loud.
Okay, I'm so excited to see our Bark Out Loud segment here. Let's see what we have. Oh, cute, look at this golden retriever. Says, somebody get this pup a piano. No kidding, right? I think we got a little Beethoven on our hands here. <laughs> that is so cute. Can't tell, I think that I think that they're sleeping. They might be dreaming, dreaming about playing the piano there. That is pretty cute. Okay, let's see what we have. Oh. <laughs> Oh, so cute little Frenchie. So excited. Dad's home, yay. Let's see him. Oh, or go right by him. Suitcases are way more exciting, right? Okay, I love this. So it says, I bought my dog a new toy and this is the thanks I get. Looks pretty grateful. Pop looks pretty happy. <laughs> Is this even a real dog? Oh my gosh, how cute. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Whoa, okay. That chihuahua is like, this is my toy. And I think we got a little swimmer. Oh, <laughs> like I'll save you, dad, I'll save you. <laughs> okay, that's a smart way to do it. Let's see what we get here. Oh. Is there a That's wild a animal dog in to our put house? The cone on, right? Who did this? Uh, oh, did me. you do this? <laughs> Hello. The owner of this house built masks for their dogs so they could see outside, and the results are <gasps> so cute. Look at so that. <gasps> oh. <laughs> okay, this little Frenchie looks like this little Frenchie's gonna get hypnotized pretty soon. <laughs> or just fall over when you break your leg and the dog mocks you. Okay, what is going on here? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> That's amazing. Okay, goals right here. This is this is fantastic. Why even sit up, right? <laughs> it was so cute. Okay, that was what I needed to see today. That was amazing. It is now time to meet a leader in the doggy rescue world in a segment we call Mission Possible. Carol Novello is the founder of Mutual Rescue and author of Mutual Rescue, How Adopting a Homeless Animal Can Save You Too. So Carol had a successful career and life in Northern California, but decided to leave that all behind to follow her passion project. She joins us from Atlanta, Georgia. Welcome to the show, Carol. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Megan. It's a delight to be here. So tell us, where did your love for animals first come from? You know, it all started when I was a little girl. And um, one of my earliest memories is actually going to pick out a Christmas tree at a Christmas tree farm. And while I was there with my parents, there was a stray cat who befriended me and I was just so smitten. And I begged <laughs> my mom that, you know, asked if we could take this kitten home. And I thought for sure that she would say no. And mm. much to my, she actually said yes. And so that was my very first rescue. But the reason why it really was so significant for me and as I reflected on it as an adult is because I really have never really been all that close to my mom. But okay. it was our connection through animals that I was, was able to forge a connection with her. It helped me oh. see her heart um, and know that she had a kindness and a love for animals. And she passed that on to me. And, you know, so much so that I ended up um, having it become part of my career. So, uh, you know, that's something that I'm really grateful for now is that my love of animals you know, came from my mother and that I had that absolutely thrilling moment uh, when I had my first rescue as a five-year-old. Oh, absolutely. And that's such a cool connection that the two of you could share. And people can individually benefit so much, too, from those close connections with our pets. Why don't you talk about that a little bit, too? Yeah, so in my book, Mutual Rescue, How Adopting a Homeless Animal Can Save You Too, it's actually broken up into four sections, heart, body, mind, and connection. And, it, and I talk about how animals can help us in each of those areas. So with heart, 
It's how do we open our hearts? How do we learn to love? How do we have the opportunity to practice being a more loving individual? When it comes to body, it's amazing the physiological changes that having animals in our lives can um, can bring to us. And uh, you know, one of the the very first mutual rescue film we created was called Eric and Petey, and it was about an overweight individual who adopted an overweight dog and together they went on to lose a lot of weight and both become really healthy. There's the mind component, which helps us quiet our mind uh, and be in the present moment. I think that's one of the greatest gifts that animals give us. And then connection. It's about not only connection with the animal, but also the connections we make with one another um, and really seeing our, our, our place in a bigger world because of the way that animals um, highlight connection and help make for a more vibrant, rich community by being a part of it. It really is amazing. And I'm sure that you learned a lot in that process of writing as well. And you have such an impressive background, a degree in economics and English from Dickinson College, an MBA from Harvard Business School, but you decided to follow your heart, right? Rather than your head, I guess you could say, uh, and pursue a passion project. So tell us more about this and that decision. Yeah, so uh, I would say I've, I have followed both my head and my heart over the course of my career. My first career mm -hmm. uh, was actually, I was a senior executive uh, in high tech at a company called Intuit. Uh, amazing company, I loved my time there. And, um, but I also felt, you know, called to do some other things. And so I actually had an opportunity to become president of Humane Society Silicon Valley, which is this thing, one, of, one of the largest privately funded animal welfare organizations in Northern California. And um, it was an amazing chance for me to take the leadership skills and the business skills that I had honed earlier on in my career and put them into play um, in an organization that was going to be helping animals and people. But what was interesting when I made that transition is that people would often ask me, why are you helping animals when you could be helping people? And I mm -hmm. thought that was, you know, a curious question because I knew how much animals had helped me in my own life. Yeah. Um, and what I realized is that we really needed to elevate the cause of animal welfare that, you know, people would also say to me, well, gosh, I feel so guilty giving time and money to animals when there's so many people in need. And what I realized is people really needed to have a visceral experience that would help them understand that when you rescue an animal, more often than not, that person is getting rescued right back. And so I started doing a presentation out in the community. It was called Why Helping Animals Helps People. Um, one of the statistics that I shared in that presentation is just the percentage of giving that goes to animal related causes. And in 2021, $485 billion were given to charity by the Americans and less than 1% went to animal and environmentally related causes combined. Wow. So I really, there was a real opportunity for us to elevate that in people's mind and help them know that when you give time and money to animal related causes, you are helping people too. So how the mutual rescue came about is that uh, I got connected with a really talented, creative genius, and he coined the phrase mutual rescue. His name is David Whitman. He used to head up the tech awards at the Tech Museum in Silicon Valley. And we um, talked about this presentation, Why Helping Animals Helps People. And I said, how can we make that more magical? How can we get broader reach for this idea? And so he coined the phrase mutual rescue, and we decided to uh, make short films that would help illustrate the impact that animals, rescue animals were having on people's lives. And our very first film, Eric and Petey, which I mentioned earlier, went crazy, crazy viral. Uh, it's been viewed more than 100 million times across the globe, um, oh. various social media platforms. And one post alone on SF Gate had over 35 million views, 200,000 shares. Oh, it was just crazy at the time. And um, we knew we were really onto something and that mm -hmm. this concept really resonated with people. Right, and so you knew what you were doing was making a difference. So tell us a little bit more, I guess, how would you describe the work that you do with Mutual Rescue? Kind of elaborate on that a bit for us. Yeah, so there's a number of different components about what we focus on. The first one okay. is just creating content that does elevate the cause of animal welfare so that people can put it on par with 
people or human related causes. Um, so we create and produce a lot of short films. You can see them on our website, mutualrescue.org. And um, as you mentioned earlier, I've written a book. Um, so another great source of content that has a lot of resources in it as well. And then we also have um, programs that we help um, make it easier for local shelters to actually create those programs and get them implemented. So we have a doggy day out toolkit uh, which shelters can download and people that are interested in taking a dog out for the afternoon, uh, they can go to our website and find a directory which will show them shelters that have those programs in their area. Cool. Um, and we also look for um, corporate sponsors. So we wanted to create a national brand um, that companies could be associated with, but then have the money that was generated um, through that collaboration actually get down to the local shelter. So a lot of people think that humane societies and SPCAs are related um, to the ASPCA or the Humane Society of the United States, and that's not the case. So hmm. in actuality, those are generic terms uh, for an animal welfare organization. So um, it's you know getting money to the local level that's coming in through corporate sponsorships. It's um, public programs that help drive engagement. And it's generating content that really, um, you know, helps people feel in their hearts just how important having um, a robust community that supports animals is at the local level. And now there are some people out there, right, who have negative or misinformed viewpoints about fundraising for animal welfare organizations. So can you help, you know, take us inside the economic side of these organizations on the macro level? And let's talk about the funding nationwide. I mean, are they well funded or not? Yeah, and it varies so much by community and it really varies okay. by how those organizations are funded. So okay. most in the United States have a local shelter and that usually is government funded and it's funded through taxpayer dollars. And so, you know, a lot of times those shelters don't have enough resource to be able to save all the animals in their community. And that's where private funding really plays an important role. So for example, in Silicon Valley, we actually were in a coalition, or still are, in a coalition of um, six shelters, most of which were government funded, but we are privately funded. And so by giving okay. to organizations that are supporting um, government shelters, that helps the whole community thrive. So I think there's a, you know, there's a, in the history of animal welfare, um, a mm -hmm. lot of times the, the government operated shelters get really painted as you know, the bad guys or whatever, because they're taking in all the stray animals and they may not have the resources to deal with it. When in fact, mm -hmm. you really need to look at it as an ecosystem and understand what's going on in the community. You know, how many, how many stray animals are coming in and, you know, are there incremental resources that the community needs to come together to support um, the shelters that are doing the work to make sure that those animals can be saved. The good news is, is that we're making a lot of progress. Um, and, you know, one of the things that I'm looking forward to in the context of where animal welfare is going in the future is that mm -hmm. we're getting to the point that we can start to look at the intersection of human services and animal services, because at the end of the day, when you understand what's driving animal homelessness, it's usually tied to human poverty. And so there's this intersection between animals and humans. The more we care about animals, excuse me, the more we care about humans and take care of them, the more able humans are able to care for their animals. Absolutely. And so you've done a lot of work to help people really embark on their own mutual rescue journeys. So you touched on this a little bit, but will you tell us more about Dog Day Out? Yeah, so Doggy Day Out uh, is a wonderful program. And we collaborated with some local shelters that had implemented those programs in uh, in their own communities. And what we saw was they were seeing an increase of you know 20% in their adoptions. The Fredericksburg SPCA um, was actually, I think one of the first to actually implement that program. So we got together with them, we got together with a few other shelters and we really understood how they set up their program. Um, and we pulled together a toolkit that had all the best practices in place for that and um, made it easier for other shelters to be, rep to be able to replicate that. And essentially what it is, is a, a program where, you know, a lot of people don't have 
the time to commit to an ongoing volunteer experience. Like a lot of volunteer programs at shelters ask you to commit to, you know, eight hours a month for a certain number of months, go through all this training, and it can be a barrier for someone to get involved. But with Doggy mm -hmm. Day Out, it's really about, you can go to the shelter for the afternoon, get a briefing, and then go take a dog out uh, on an adventure. And it's wonderful <laughs> because, you get, as the person, you get human, you know, you get the interaction with the animal, the animal gets the interaction with the humor, gets a break from the shelter. And then what oh. also happens, people get excited that they've connected with this animal. And a lot of times they'll post about the animal on social media, which gets the animal more exposure and more likely to get adopted, or maybe you even fall in love and decide to adopt the dog. <laughs> what is that, a foster failure? Isn't that what that's called? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, foster failure. Yeah, exactly. We love oh, that. It's such a good idea. And okay, so you've done a lot of different things here. You've also, you know, produced some really captivating original content. You were giving us some of the stats earlier on just how well some of this content has done. But let's go back to, to the beginning here. You know, where did the idea for uh, some of these stories for mass consumption really come from in the first place? Yeah, so, you know, the Eric and Petey, which was our first film, um, was an adoption story that came out of Humane Society of Silicon Valley. So uh, oh. Eric adop adopted Petey uh, from our shelter, and he wrote in to tell us his story, and it just blew me away. And, um, and I started including his story in my Why Helping Animals Helps People presentation out in the community. And so then when we had an opportunity uh, to turn that into a film, we thought it would be a great opportunity to actually reach out to the public and ask them to tell us their mutual rescue stories. So we, um, we launched Eric and Petey and, and made it a call for stories and invited people to say, hey, if you want to have a film like this made about your mutual rescue story, please tell us about it. We got hundreds and hundreds of submissions um, that <laughs> in our next set of films. Um, wow. And a lot of those stories ended up um, in the Mutual Rescue book. Um, and today we still have people that will share their stories. But the other thing that also happens is just as, you know, we engage with more and more local shelters um, and we have a new um, approach to how we're telling stories now. So our, we have our original format films, which are a little longer, and we really okay. highlight the, the relationship between the person and the pet. And we have a new uh, format. It's called Mutual Rescue Moments. Those stories are, um, those films are a little shorter, um, but they also introduce the organization that was behind the adoption um, in the event that there was one. And in many cases, um, they're so excited to now have this wonderful story that came out of their work that more and more shelters are coming to us with their, with their mutual rescue stories coming out of their adoptions. Um, we have a great uh, film that's going to be coming out. Um, we don't have a release date yet, but um, with a wonderful organization called Dogs Matter, and they approached us. So we're just excited that the word is getting out and, and people want to want to tell us their stories. And if if anybody listening has a great mutual rescue story, you can always reach out to us at hello at mutualrescue.org. Um, go to our website. We'd love to hear it and love to consider it for um, a future film or a future content that we put together. So speaking of films, the world of film, you have to tell us too about the creation process for Mutual Rescue Film Festival. Yeah, so um, we have, well, there's a couple of different things we do. So a lot of folks um, will have film festivals um, related to the content that we've created. Um, we had a wonderful um, event that Rough Haven uh, put on in Utah from our chemo and jazz film that was about uh, the founder of Rough Haven. Um, but then we've also been working with the New York uh, Cat and Dog Film Festival and sharing some of the, the uh, best uh, films from that film festival. And if you go to our website, uh, you can find uh, a whole selection of films from the New York Dog and New York Cat uh, Film Festival. So that's really a fun collaboration that we've enjoyed as well. I can imagine. I bet that is some awesome content. Uh, yeah. Now, you're, you're also on the board of directors at Cuddly Inc., an animal rescue organization that was actually founded by NFL referee John Hussey. So tell us about what Cuddly does. 
Yeah. So Cuddly is actually uh, not a nonprofit. It's actually a for-profit company. Um, and it's focused, the best way to describe it is that it is the, um, it is GoFundMe plus Amazon wish lists combined uh, to benefit animal rescue organizations. So a lot of animal, um, smaller animal rescue organizations don't have a lot of resources um, and time available to fundraise. And a lot of times they're in need of, um, you know, very specific items. They need food, they need, you know, litter, they need leashes right. and all those. Um, and so Cuddly uh, does, uh, helps those organizations fundraising, essentially does the fundraising for them and then wow. helps get goods that they need in order to um, save and care for those animals. So um, they're doing great work and playing a really uh, important role in the ecosystem, especially for those smaller organizations, although they work with some larger organizations too. Um, but great company and you can uh, check them out at cuddly.com. Perfect. Okay. So if our viewers would like to learn more about Mutual Rescue, where should they go? They should go to mutualrescue.org is our website. Uh, you can also okay. find us on Facebook and on Instagram. Uh, our handle is Mutual Rescue. And uh, we always love for people to submit their Mutual Rescue stories. So you can do that uh, at our website as well. Wonderful. Well, we have been talking here with Carol Novello, the founder of Mutual Rescue and author of Mutual Rescue, How Adopting a Homeless Animal Can Save You Too. So Carol, it was wonderful speaking with you today. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Megan. It was an absolute delight to be here. Okay, dog mom. So you know what time it is. It's my favorite segment. You have to type memes in the chat box if you are ready for dog meme time. So our staff has been scrolling through social media looking for the funniest post. So let's get right to it. It is dog meme time. Okay, waiting on my luggage. What do we have here? Oh, how cute is that? He's got his little stick ready to go. I'm glad that it, you know, made it through, made it through security and everything. <laughs> So cute. Okay, saw a lost dog sign while driving, and it said at the bottom, do not chase. He thinks everything is a game. Isn't that true? That is so true. <laughs> so cute. Okay, the most beautiful photograph you will see all day. <gasps> I love this. I love that there's even a lady in the back taking a selfie, and then we just have this lab that's like could not be any happier. That is a beautiful photo for so many reasons. So cute. Okay, here we have big dogs and small dogs. That is so true. What is with little dogs? They always think that they're big dogs, right? And then big dogs are mellow and chill. <laughs> that is so funny. That's cute. Okay, I grab my keys and then my dog, where are we going, brah? <laughs> Like, I got my sunglasses on. I got my bag packed. Like, I'm ready. I'm down for anything. That's so cute. Me, my dog, will do anything, right, for a tiny piece of my pizza crust. <laughs> you have their full attention. They will be perfectly behaved. Anything for that little bit of pizza crust. She believed she could, but the dog was sitting on her lap. So she didn't. Good decision, right? Words to live by. That was awesome. Be sure to hit the like button on this video as it really helps us grow and bring more to Dog Mom News. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel as well and ring the notification bell button to stay up to date with our latest videos and our content. Now, speaking of great content, you need to hear about this. Dog Mom News has officially launched our premium monthly membership program. Let's talk a little bit more about Dog Mom News Premium. So it's a monthly membership with special access to monthly prizes, contests, giveaways, expert dog training tips from top trainers, dream vacation getaways, expert tips in pet health, exclusive access to our premium Facebook group, expert dog grooming tips, helpful tips, tips from dog nutritionists. We have custom apparel information and discounts, coupons, and free stuff in the doggy world. 
This monthly membership is jam-packed with valuable information that is designed to help increase the bond between you and your dog. And for a limited time, this is really cool, you can actually sign up for a 14-day free trial. So head on over to dogmomnews.com slash premium and sign up for your free trial because we know you are going to love it. All right, dog moms, the moment we've been waiting for, it is time to announce the winners of our July 4th contest. So over the past few weeks, we've been accepting submissions for our patriotic pause photo contest and our Tales of Freedom video contest. We have received so many wonderful photos and videos of your pups, and we are very grateful for the submission. So let's take a look at some of these adorable pups that we have here. Oh, look at this. Everyone looks so good. Look at them. So patriotic in their red, white, and blue. Cute little sunglasses. I love this. Oh, so cute. These little outfits, you guys. So creative and the sets and everything that you've got there. All right, top five. Bubbles in number one. Look at that. Coco, Cherry, Lily, and Bart. Congratulations to everyone. Our entry number four is our winner, Bubbles and Dog Mom Stacy. Congratulations. All right. Tales of Freedom scores. Top three, Lily, Sino, and Riley. Congratulations to Lily and Dog Mom Stephanie. That is so exciting. And I love this video. If I fit. I sit. <laughs> this is so cute. This is adorable. It looks like the two of you had the best day ever on the 4th of July. They see me rolling. No dogs in the pool. She's like, I don't count, right? Okay, she is not into those vegetables. She wants nothing to do with those vegetables. <laughs> so dramatic, right? So cute. Little wonder dog for the 4th of July that is absolutely adorable. Look at that. She got what she wanted. So congratulations both to Bubbles and Stacy getting a $50 gift card. And then Lily and Stephanie will be receiving $100. Congratulations to the winners. And thank you so much to everyone who sent out those submissions. All right, everyone. What a great episode today. We spoke with Haley Adair and her influencer pup. Daryl the Doge. We also got to speak with Carol Novello of Mutual Rescue. They are both doing such wonderful things in the canine community. Be sure to join us next Thursday, July 20th at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for another great episode hosted by Karina Sullivan. Thank you so much for joining us for this live show, but the fun does not stop here. We wanna invite you all to interact with our show if you see something online that you think we need to see, tag us in a post at Dog Mom News. And for more content from us, find us on social media at Dog Mom News. So give us a like, drop us a comment, and subscribe to stay up to date with everything we have going on. Now, Dog Mom News is growing, but we need your help. You can help us out by hitting the like button on this video. It helps us bring you more dog mom news. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and ring the notification bell button so you will know when we release new content. And thank you. All right, dog moms, it is time to do a quick giveaway. Be sure to type yes in the chat box if you think we should have a quick giveaway. Okay, excellent. So here's what we'll do. First off, you can go ahead and like this live video. Of course, please and thank you. Okay, now we're going to play a quick game called Four Picks, One Word. So the first dog mom to type the correct answer in this chat will win. And then we will reach out and we'll get you your gift card. Let's take a look. Okay, so it is a dog breed, but what breed is it? We have nine seconds on the clock, seven Six, five. This is a really cute breed. I love this breed. It is adorable. And here we have the French Bulldog. Excellent. Thank you so much for playing Dog Moms. That was fun. So for more information on how to become a premium member or how to be a guest on our show, visit dogmomnews.com. Be sure to join us next week, the same pup time, same pup channel from Dog Mom News Live. I'm Megan Reisted.